The absurd. The obsessed. The obscure. Follow us if you dare as we open the files at my weird space. This is one bad case of puppy love. Join us for a night of freezing fun. And can you spot the waterfall? Now before you go thinking, what a poor girl, look at how many arms she was born with. Stop for a minute and have a closer look. This is actually a group of 21 hearing impaired dancers practicing their routine. But man, imagine how much quicker you would be in a swimming pool if you did have this many arms. You'd be guaranteed to be the world record lap holder forever. These dancers are practicing the Thousand Hand Guan Yin, which is performed at major events. It's a visually stunning performance where a lot of time and preparation goes into the costumes, makeup, as well as the dance routine. They need to rely on their dance instructors who can hear the music and then give them the gestures, which usually consists of the dancer's arms swaying and flickering behind a lead dancer. It's almost ironic, deaf people having better coordination with music than a lot of people I know that have perfectly good hearing. This does look pretty cool though and kind of brings me back to the 70s funky disco clip era. And don't forget everybody, and three, two, one, jazz hands. When you hear of museums, you automatically think of beautiful artwork and amazing talent. But here at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, the artwork is, well, let's say, a little different. Either this was one really bad car accident, or this artist just had too much time on their hands. And it kind of gives a new meaning to the saying, gee, that car's flying. Violence seems to run through much of this artist's work. One of their artworks, called Head On, is a long line of wolves running head first into a plastic wall. It's artwork like this that makes you wonder what goes through some people's heads. And trying to understand it makes you want to smack your own head against a wall. Artwork can take many shapes and forms. These pieces of art have disgustingly been named Explosive Diarrhea, and how they came up with the idea, we'll never know. And if I'd known that poor archery could be classed as artwork, well, I could have sold my artwork years ago. If you kiddies out there are getting bored with the usual woodwork or home echo classes at school, then introduce your teachers to this, ice carving. Who knows, you can even win competitions with it. These ice carvings and their carvers are lining the streets in Seoul as part of the second ice carving competition, which this year has based its designs on the Football World Cup. Many different designs were on display and competition was fierce. The problem then being was when the artists weren't keeping an eye on their display, other competitors kept trying to melt them by throwing warm water over them. How rude. It takes a lot of time, care and precision to make these carvings just right for public viewing, with many people ending up with prize-winning displays. And someone please dare these kids to lick the ice. That would almost be the highlight of the event. Celebrations do end in style. Everyone kicks back and relaxes with a few drinks. And at least we know there's no shortage of ice. Many people are still trying to work out whether this artwork is meant to be enjoyable to look at or smell. You see, everything here is made out of old shoes. An artist from Turkey one night found himself extremely bored. And when he saw an old pair of shoes lying around, his mind started wandering. How he came up with making faces out of shoes, I'll never know. 
By folding, wrapping and cutting, he was able to turn any shoe into many different smiling faces. This guy's foot fetish, I think, has gone too far. The scary thing is that this artwork has become really popular, with some people actually owning their own private art collection of shoes. This so-called artist now plans to use old clothing and shoes for his new project. He plans to make a reproduction of the famous Mona Lisa painting. Well, I guess if the shoe fits... School excursions are always fun, but in Tokyo, students don't just get to view animals in their cage. They get to view a live performance of what would happen if an animal was to escape from their cage. Like this mean-looking zebra. And it's causing havoc. So far, it's already injured a visitor and is going back to get more revenge on the zookeeper that ran to their aid. But don't worry kids, this is just a drill in case of an earthquake, which we all know Japan is prone to. That's why these zookeepers decided to start running the drills, so they could be prepared in case of an emergency. The only problem so far is that some of the zoo workers haven't quite worked out that the animals aren't real. I know it's hard to tell, but they're only paper mache costumes that other workers run around in pretending to be the animal. Unfortunately, it took zoo workers a few minutes to realise why these people weren't waking up. They'd accidentally put real tranquilizers in the gun. Whoops, off to the hospital you go. Oh, isn't this the cutest little thing you've ever seen? Meet Vicky, Vincent and Victoria. And just so you don't get confused, Vicky is the Chihuahua and Vincent and Victoria are the raccoon-like animals. Poor Vicky is one confused dog. She's a 10-year-old suffering from a false pregnancy. And to confuse matters more, she thinks the raccoon-like animals are hers. Oh, these kids are wearing me out. Mummy, where are you? Let's play. Come on, we want to play. Please. Ugh, they may be cute, but they're a pain in the behind. These two playful siblings are actually born in a zoo in Germany. So why they paired them up with a chihuahua, we'll never know. At the Nation Museum in Kenya, scientists have come across a particular fish that they thought was extinct until now. This is a coelacanth, which is a member of the primitive group of fish that have been in existence for 400 million years. Being caught a few months ago by a local fisherman, it has been described as a biological curiosity and is the most important fish in the world. Some people also think that this fish brings with it good fortune because of its peculiar fins. But I'm pretty sure the only thing this fish brings is one really putrid smell. Measuring slightly over 150 centimetres long and weighing 77 kilograms, this fish is going to be on display at the museum. Seems a waste to me though. It's big enough and could be used to feed an entire village. We've all seen or at least heard of the terrifying movies Arachnophobia and Anaconda. But prepare yourself for the new spine-tingling horror in Motophobia. 
Beware, children. Millions of butterflies are out to get revenge for all those years being locked in glass houses. And these frightening insects will not stop until they have at least fluttered in your face. And don't think you can escape them. They'll have you surrounded, and every way you turn, they're waiting just to attack. For everyone who thought butterflies were beautiful, be prepared, because this summer, they're coming to frighten the beautiful out of you. With the Dragon Town Squad coming here today, listen up closely, we got something to say. I've got baggy pants and a pretty pink shirt, but I really wish I found my mama's matching pink skirt. Would you believe these guys are actually famous for rapping about Chinese food? Strange, but true. I got attitude and style, and I'm really, really hungry. If I don't get some food, I'm afraid I'll get angry. I feel like some noodles, or maybe some fried rice. Add a bit of soy sauce, mm, that would make it taste nice. Or how about some chicken, lemon, or honey? Doesn't matter either way, I ain't got no money. Wiki wiki wow! Are you sick of the service at most restaurants? Are you tired of the rude waiters and the long waits for your meals? Are you annoyed at how many times you've waited for that meal only for it to be wrong? Well, look no further. I know not all restaurants are like that and will not have excellent service, but this restaurant has changed the way we order our meals and it has people piling through the door. Ordering meals at this restaurant is via the computer. The only issue the owners have had so far is sometimes the computer gets confused between potato chips and computer chips. Ah, summertime. Such perfect weather to go for a swim, followed by a cool drink. You find when most people enter a nightclub or bar, they take their jackets off. But at this bar, it works a little different. Here, instead of turning up in a skimpy little dress to impress the men, you actually have to put on more quite unflattering clothing because it's freezing. As you can see, everything is made out of ice. The glasses, the seats, the tables, everything. And just remember, don't sit down on the toilet seat. Every night the owners have to carve new glasses out of blocks of ice, which is a good thing because that means not a lot of washing up at the end of the night. This ice bar would suck though, especially if you wanted a drink with no ice. Chocolate lovers from around the world, pack your bags, find your passports and get ready to fly because we're heading to Paris for the annual chocolate fair. Be careful when stuffing your face with these delicious treats though, you never know who's watching you. This six-day event isn't all about chocolatey treats, though. Visitors can be entertained by a fashion show. But what do you think all that clothing is made of? Yep, chocolate. Probably not the best kind of outfit to wear on a night out, but I guess it would be great for all those chocoholics who are after that midnight snack. And for karaoke lovers wearing this outfit, you're bound to steal the show with Rock Around the Chalk. If seeing elderly people behind the wheel of a car scares you, then definitely keep these away from them. This little motorised scooter is the invention of one smart cookie in America. 
they're not really designed for use on roads, but more for those crowded footpaths. The zippy little scooter will get you from A to B in no time, and it's also fun to see how many people you can hit along the way. Driving them is quite easy. You simply lean forward to go forward, lean back to go back, and turn by twisting the handle. I can actually see these becoming one of the next extreme sports. These guys have already mastered a number of difficult tricks, like jumps and donuts. Next, we'll be seeing them perform 360s in mid-air. As you can see, I wouldn't recommend buying one for your grandma unless she's an extreme granny. Mobile phones have become one of the most popular accessories for people of today. Everywhere you go, you take your phone. It's been recommended by phone manufacturers that you don't have your phone anywhere near water because water and phones don't mix until now. Forget warranties, forget liquid ingression, none of that even matters anymore because these men are the brainchild behind the scuba phone. Its main purpose was to be used by divers, so communication would be easier when they are 20 feet under. Now, I know you're wondering, how do they do it when there's no speaker or earpiece? Well, it's really quite simple. There's a special mouthpiece with a membrane that allows vibrations to be carried through the teeth and into the ear channels. And the mouthpiece is integrated into the diver's usual breathing equipment. The only problem the diver seems to have is running out of breath quickly. Maybe having the mouthpiece and the breathing apparatus as one is not such a good idea. OK, who turned on all the toys on the shelf? Come on, own up. I know we've all been guilty of that at one time or another. But these toys aren't at a toy shop. They're with these wrapping robots that are on display at the International Robot Exhibition in Japan. Here they demonstrate the brilliance that's slowly taking over the world. Where's the robot? Oh, there it is. Where's the robot? Oh, there it is. This exhibition shows what kind of robots are used for what kind of jobs, with inventors making a point of saying that these are designed to do the jobs that humans shouldn't because of the dangers involved. But it seems that robots are doing most jobs these days. Kind of glad I'm a television presenter. They can't really replace my job with a robot, can they? They even show robots making robots. But then, how did these robots get made? People in Chile wanted to get back to our origins. They wanted to find out who we are and how we're capable of doing the things we do. And what better way to do it than by visiting the zoo and reading poetry to baboons? Many people crowded around in astonishment to watch this weird but inspiring event that featured a half a dozen poets, including the winner of the National Prize in Literature. The baboons looked on in wonderment and surprisingly didn't respond the way everyone thought they would. Did they seem to forget that they're the monkeys that don't really care if people read them poetry? Give them a banana and a nose to pick and they're happy. The only things these red bottom baboons left the poets and the people who thought this would work was being a red face baboon. There are many people out there who are collectors of fine arts, real estate and antique cars, but there are some whose collections are a little more cuddly.
Instead of a teddy bear's picnic, these collectors attend a teddy bear auction. With over 500 fluffy teddies up for sale, many of the bears date back to the 1950s, with some costing at least a few hundred dollars. The competition here can be sometimes a little hard to bear, with many people fighting over the same thing. Like this little bear on a bicycle. And how much do you think this went for? 20, 30 dollars? No, keep going. 115 ridiculous dollars. It may look a little boring for us who don't really have an interest in the soft, cuddly toys, but for these keen bear collecting people, it's very exciting. Who would ever have imagined that collecting junk could turn out to be quite a smart investment? Well, someone in India did. A retired road inspector has been collecting junk from the side of the road since the late 50s and in his spare time started making different objects. As the years passed, he transformed domestic and industrial debris into palaces and temples. Besides picking up rubbish, he scavenged building and demolition sites, looking for more material with which to sculpt his articles of breathtaking beauty. All this creativity was then turned into the junk garden, which is now known as the rock garden and receives an average 5,000 visitors a day. Entry fee into the rock garden is only 11 cents and once you reach the end of the garden you really begin to understand why this does only cost 11 cents. The Velast waterfall on the northeast coast of Estonia is the highest in the country. At 25 metres high, the waterfall is a spectacular sight in any season. But with the recent weather conditions, it's been transformed into a winter wonderland. Strong sea winds and sudden low temperatures have seen much of the waterfall freeze. While water still flows, everything surrounding it is covered in beautiful ice crystals. The waterfall lies between the village of Antica, which is just 83 inhabitants, and Velast, where 121 people live. It is along the Antica limestone cliff, which reaches 56 metres at its highest point. Visitors can still view the waterfall and be amazed at the ice sculptures which look as if they're growing out of the ground. Even the ice cream booth, rubbish bins and information booth are covered in dripping ice. But does anyone else think this ice looks more like wax? That's all we have this time, but follow us again if you dare when we open the files at My Weird Space. <laughs>